there are three Canadian mixed martial artists that are women in the UFC. Lupi Godinez, Jillian Robertson, Jasmine Jazdevicious, and I am about to talk to the fourth. It's Melissa Croden. She is the 135-pound Pala Athena, Palace Athena, Bantamweight champion. Welcome, Melissa. I'm really excited to talk to you. And first and foremost, I have to congratulate you. Palace Athena, it's a brand new uh, promotion. It's an all-women's promotion in Canada that just started up. You're the first 135-pound champion. That has got to be an amazing feeling. Yeah. Uh, it was a really cool experience uh, to be able to um, take that opportunity and kind of roll with it. So, uh, yeah, I hope it's one of many in my professional career. I hope so, too, because watching your fights, you are one of the most entertaining uh, women's mixed martial artists that I have seen in a really long time. Um, I, I, there are some things about your fighting style that for nobody who's seen you fight before, like, it's like, okay, like sit down and like really pay attention because you're very entertaining. You're very, very fast. Um, you're very elusive. You're hard to hit. But what I like most about you watching you fight is you're very, very unpredictable. Um, just when I think I have your cadences down and, and once I've like seen you fight enough where it's like, okay, she likes to throw this, she likes to throw that. I am always guessing. And I have to imagine it's like way worse for your opponent because you're so unpredictable. Um, but I know that there are elements of your game that I'm also not talking about, like your jujitsu, your wrestling, your clinch work. Can you talk about, for people who've never seen you fight before, where are some areas that you feel that you have a massive edge over anyone that uh, has to has the misfortune of fighting against you. If I am to think about it, I would say my edge is what you said is like, I'm pretty explosive. Um, I'm really starting to learn how to relax between being explosive. So that cadence that you kind of mentioned is like, go relax, explosive, back to being relaxed so that you're able to respond and adapt to your opponent is kind of an edge I have. And it's taken a long time to learn how to do that, especially like given my personality type and like your personality type comes out in your rhythm and your training right because you know we're psychosomatic beings like we carry ourselves a certain way for a very specific reason I think that as I've developed as a human being I've been able to kind of like uh have more of a personality and be able to express who I am in the cage a bit more so I think having that confidence is you know it's an advantage for sure and like also on the more technical side of things um we work a lot of footwork like that's kind of our base training is like the stuff that most fighters don't really have the patience to spend so much time on footwork mm -hmm. range control but that's my game plan every time so able to advance it uh every fight and um be able to showcase like the things that I have been learning over the past 10 years of training um you know I think it's all going to start to like come together very very quickly and yeah I, I believe that I can do something really special with this what I've been given which is in my training there are a lot of really interesting things about you um there's some subtle areas of your game as well though that I've kind of picked up on I I feel like for the gals that try to close the distance on you, like you're a, a, a rangy fighter that will pick somebody apart. If, 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 if I give you the distance, like you're just gonna like pick me apart a hundred percent. But there are other things about you that make you very, very good. Um, like your clinch work, for example, they might get like the underhooks on you, but like you're able to like reverse position very, very easily. Um, when you have gotten taken down, you're very, very hard to keep down. Like I like so many things about your game because I feel like no matter what happens, you're able to get out of bad positions. Relic it looks easy. I'm sure it's not, but it looks easy. You're able to like continually, you're able to like fight the fight on your terms I feel and like your opponents are constantly reacting to what it is that you're doing can you describe like the not so flashy elements of your game like your jujitsu your wrestling your clinch work those have got to be things that you probably spend so much time on in the training room because naturally 
uh, if I'm an opposing coach, I'm telling my fighter, we're not striking with this girl. Like we're, we're going to try to take her down. We're going to try to make this an ugly, nasty fight. And if I'm thinking it, I'm sure you and your coaches are thinking the exact same thing. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, well, I think the reason, like, if I'm thinking, I'm more of a deep thinker. So when I like dig under that question a little bit more, it's, we understand my, like, I understand my weaknesses mm-hmm. pretty well. And I think our training has been, comes to fight time, like the training is kind of ro- revolves around my weaknesses in mm-hmm. a way. Like you have to still balance that with like doing the things that you're good at, but you can't always focus on that and like always feel good and always feel like you're such a badass because you have to be held accountable for the things <clears throat> that you're not great, like the areas that you're not great in. And um, so I constantly am always like, for example, with my wrestling, I'm always worried about getting like stuck under mm-hmm. rest, like getting grinded out like that's that's my nightmare in a way yeah, of course but the fact that we've worked so hard to not even allow those positions to happen I think has been how I've been able to be successful in those exchanges and then I'm terrible at clinch like I'm I am not if I were to be a Muay Thai, first Muay Thai fighter ever I'm not like upright I don't like exchanging clothes with volume like I'm terrible at blocking leg kicks, like still. Everyone tries to leg kick me, of course, um, because my stance is so wide. But like, I still know how to clinch though in MMA. Like I attempted a trip in my last fight and almost got it. But then after that transition, like you're back to striking. So it's like, you have to, you just make it a fight and in any of those positions, like always punishing the person for whatever it is that they're doing so if they're going to take me down it's not going to be easy or you're going to get smashed kind of thing so that's kind of the mentality I have in approaching those situations right absolutely one of the things that I also have kind of like picked up on is you don't fight with a lot of ego um I feel like you see a lot of people I don't, I, and I'm not sure why, I don't know if they're trying to make a statement or, or whatever the case may be, but you'll see some people maybe fight a little bit out of character. For example, you'll see a striker and, and you'll see that striker do something really out of character. Like they'll come into a fight with a really like wrestling heavy game plan. And sometimes that makes sense, but other times it, it, it doesn't, it's like you have a, a distinct advantage in one area. Why wouldn't you like continue to like, utilize or leverage that advantage specifically with you it was against it was uh when you fought evelyn martins i thought you won that fight by the way we can talk about that one too but when you would clinch with her well she clinched with you you would reverse position and then you'd break off you'd break off because you knew she didn't want that distance in between you guys she wanted to make it an ugly nasty fight and you're like we're not, I'm not doing that. Like, you're going to fight the fight. How I, how I dictate to you, like, so, and you were able to do that. You were able to like break out of her clinch and like go back to fighting the fight on your terms, uh, standing up, exchanging strikes with her. And, and sometimes when I see people that are like really good. So for example, if you're like a jujitsu guy, it's like, why are like, keep the fight on the ground. Like you don't have to use your strengths, leverage those abilities. Um, and sometimes you'll see fighters that are really good and kind of makes me wonder like why they're making some of the decisions that they're making, but I don't ever feel that way with you. I feel like, you know what you're really good at when you're like breaking the clinches and not going for takedowns and like wanting to go back in the center of the cage. I was like, Oh, thank God. Like this is something like, that's what I would have done. And you were able, and you did that. And that's really nice to see. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's like, if you have a game plan and it's kind of, been burned into your brain a bit I find it really difficult because I really want to I try to show respect to my coaches and and listen to them and trust them and whatnot so we develop those game plans specifically for that opponent or for that fight or like control the fight in a in a certain way but I just that's just moments where it's those are just moments where I'm sticking to our game plan and that's it so if I'm supposed to be controlling the center and not wrestling or clinching that's what I'm going to do right so I'll use like my tools to break off 
the clinch, for example, to maintain my range, right? So not ever accepting the opponent's position so that I have control and dictate the fight as best as, as I can. But I haven't, I mean, in, in training, I've had experiences where it, most of the time in training, it doesn't go my way, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where you need to figure out how you can adapt and you find little ways to kind of, you know, be dominant in every single position, right? So, yeah. Uh, and then when you get to the day, like to the day of the fight, you just kind of hope that you overperform and <laughs> not hope, but like, obviously there's a lot behind it, but like, yeah. <laughs> talk to me, talk to me, Melissa, a little bit about just kind of like your approach for some of these fights. I think what's so unique about you is you are through and through a lady that finishes fights. You put people to sleep time and time again. And sometimes like we'll see people, you'll, you'll see that wane sometimes. So you'll see somebody get like a ton of KOs as an amateur and then it's a little bit hit or miss in the, in the, in the pros. Sometimes what you'll see even worse, you'll see them get knocked out a whole bunch. People who were fight finishers, they go for that home run, they get caught. That doesn't happen to you. I feel like while, while I'm watching you fight, you know that you're a fight finisher, but doesn't ever feel, I, I don't get the sense that that's something you're actively hunting for. I think that you have the uh, discipline and the wherewithal to like, no, like not hunt for it. Just know that within 15 minutes or, or, or beyond, if it's a 25 minute fight that you'll find it in due time. Um, is, is there some credence to that a little bit? Like, can you talk me through uh, your mindset when it comes to your approach to just fights in general and being a fight finisher? Say that that's just how I've been trained. Mm -hmm. Like even in my amateur or even when I started taking MMA seriously in my younger years uh my coach has taught me that the the game plan is just kill like to kill the person right <laughs> absolutely and, like that's just how i've approached my training my fights since the beginning so it's not something that i've had to be active about on mm -hmm. the day something that you kind of flip a switch and you become the berserker right like and i think i'm able to do that to a degree that kind of freaks me out a little bit when I watch the tape because that's it doesn't feel like it's me it's like this other being that's kind of or this archetype that's kind of taking my body in a way so it's 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 kind of a cool experience too because it's like you get to become a thing for the evening right um but we also implement that in training as well like there's a lot of cognitive work that is to that I do to kind of be able to embody that in a way um so yeah it's not something I actively hunt because I find if you actively hunt for a clean knockout or something it's probably not going to happen mm -hmm. you have to relax trust your training trust your body you know your body my coach always tells me that like our brains are stupid our body has been around for a long time and has survived a lot of things through evolution and we've adapted and we've developed these senses for specific reasons and um to allow them to do their work is a lot more beneficial than like overthinking things like, i'm gonna knock this person out right so that you're gonna you know smash someone it's less likely to happen because now you have this thought in your head that kind of blocks all the other magical things that could happen in a fight like through your movement and through your training so I would um, imagine for it to be like a relatable example it's probably like um baseball in a way like you get up to play and you're not like the home run will come if you do all the things that you've been trying to do, like how you grip the bat, your, your, your stance. It's like all these like fundamentals, but sometimes you'll see somebody and you know, they're swinging for the fences and then they just catch a bunch of air and then they fall over themselves. And I would imagine yeah. it's very, very similar in, in mixed martial arts. It's like, if you hunt for it, like 
you're going to um, overcommit. That person will evade your punch. And then all of a sudden it's like you've o- overcommitted and you're leaving yourself very, very vulnerable to getting countered. I imagine it's very much like that. Yeah, that's a good analogy, actually, because you see time and again that it's not always the hardest punch that knocks you blow. It's the one you don't see coming. Yeah, it's the timing, the angling, distance, you know, rhythm, all the things that are, you know, masterpieces to work or to watch rather. Like, that's kind of the, the art in martial arts is when you see those little moments where you're like, whoa, like that was someone in motion like no mind that beautiful kind of thing that everybody subconsciously wants right for themselves Mm -hmm. to escape your own stupid mind and like stupid thoughts that we have on the daily and I think that's why a lot of people are drawn to martial arts or high level sports in general right like you're seeing somebody like a human being be it's their highest potential right Absolutely. I want to look at your record for a little bit because I look at you and I see four and one and then I look down I, and I'm always curious. I don't put a lot. I'm the type of guy. This is like, I don't even know what this show is like 150 plus. We'll just say that. Right. So I've talked to fighters from all over the world and we have a tendency at first. And when I first started covering MMA, it was like, well, what's their record? And that would be the first thing I zoomed in on. And but now I don't do that. I like evaluate and I pick it apart. And I want to know who you fought. When did you fight? What are the caliber of gals that you're fighting against? I peel back that uh, onion on you. And you have one of the more impressive records that I have seen in quite some time. Um, particularly your last three fights, Martins, McLean, and then Holm. You're talking about three really, really difficult opponents. And I would challenge anybody to like, do the same, evaluate all three of those ladies, go through their records and look at the people they fought as well. And you're going to see like a different caliber of opponent. That 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 says a lot about you. Like you're not just like fighting these like random girls that are showing up. Like these are very, very difficult opponents. What was the one that you felt in your professional career? Like, was there one in particular that really like brought out the best in you, win, loser? or win or lose was there one that kind of stands out in your mind like man that was like a war uh hands down my last fight that was me at my best right now um Mm -hmm. so it was the first time that I ever was able to really showcase you know my what my style is gonna be um and how it's going to change like you're going to start seeing I think more flow as uh like within my next fight I think too like that's my ultimate goal is like freedom right like freedom from our mind I guess not to get too deep into it but um yeah I think that was definitely my best performance to date uh and the the fact that it was a title fight too kind of like makes it look even cooler I guess whatever (laughs) um but I really just felt like I kind of dominated in every position and like I was my most competent like I had an Mm -hmm. answer for everything basically I still made mistakes of course that's gonna happen no matter like you're it's never gonna be enough I think you never get there you know right right I think that makes sense though because MMA it's such like it's such a weird sport in a way because you have to find that real balance between like, I don't know. I feel like there are certain fighters that are like, Oh, every, every time I go out there, it's complete shit. I'm really mad at my performance. And they looked fantastic, by the way, they could like knock somebody out in like 10 seconds or, and they could say something like, Oh yeah, well, you know, my mindset should have been better. My footwork still sucked. And like, there are all these things, right. And then on the other extreme, there are these fighters that I feel like they have a lot of hubris, like they've never been bested and they think they're the best all the time. And it's like, I I, I think you kind of need to like find that like middle ground between the two. I think like the, don't let the highs get so high and don't let the lows get so low. And I know like for every person, like how we find that happy middle ground is, is it's different for all of us. 
but for you in particular, it's like in your entire fighting career, there hasn't been record wise, record wise, I'm going to be very clear what I'm talking about. Record wise, there has not been a lot of adversity in your career. I'm sure you might have a very different story behind the scenes for all the things that we don't know about, but you are somebody that doesn't lose. Like you are not used to losing. And so my question is like, what is your approach to like being like just training in general and like staying humble? Um, Cause you seem like a very, like despite being an amazing fighter, like you seem like the type of person that's incredibly grounded and incredibly humble and just looking to get better every time you go out. Um, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Like behind the scenes, uh, the way that you describe the fighters that, you know, are really hypercritical of themselves. That's basically how I feel any, any sparring session really. Like, I'm like, oh man, I feel like if my training partner is like, oh, how'd you feel about your rounds? I'm like, I felt like shit. Like, right. I'm gonna, like, didn't do this. Like I should have done this. And you stew on it for another week and mm-hmm. feel about it and just get back to work. There's always going to be work to be done. Right. Like the second that you think that you've made it is when you're done, like your coaches, if you don't have any problems, like your coaches aren't going to have anything to offer you. You're not going to develop better. Right. Like the potential for MMA is well beyond what we're seeing right now. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's such a, a new sport. And I think there's a bit of a plateau right now. I think that's why everyone's retiring at the moment. Like all the OGs are like, okay, hey, I'm done. Take room for new people. But I think there's like this weird gap that's happening where you're going to start to see some like some really incredible things. Um, and I, I hope to be part of that, right? You will. I think you will. Um, so yeah, to stay like, I'm really lucky because uh, my coach, Dan Miller, he's he's on me all the time about how, where I need to be better, how I need to do those things, keeping me accountable. Um, so I'm really lucky to have that as difficult as it is, right? Because it's, it's hard to put in all this work and still feel like you're not doing enough, right? Let, that's where people quit because they put in the work they want the result right Mm. and and mma is so it's not cut and dry it's so messy that way on the from an athlete's perspective like there's so many variables that you have to deal with constantly that it's just i could think of ten thousand to quit like for myself like and i do all the time i'm not gonna lie like i'm still human right like there's a large side of me if I'm being honest it's like oh it'd be so much easier if I was just like being a normal human being and like I could just go out with my friends and have a drink and not have to worry about this and that but like I don't really want to live that kind of life yeah. uh so thing to continue I'm like making a conscious decision to make this my life right because it, and it, um how it changes me as a person so it it's hard to keep it's hard to stay humble for sure especially at this point when everyone tells you you're awesome right you it's sometimes I have to plug my ears yeah. like legit like please don't tell me that I don't I start believing that in a way like I'm not self-deprecating like I don't think I I understand my limits I guess right like I understand mm-hmm. how my brain works and I'm afraid to start believing my own hype because I did that before and that's when I lost right I thought I had done it and like just shit the bed basically so because I was like I don't need to do the things I was doing before I already know all the I know all the lessons right like I know I know everything already and the second you do that like the results show it's very much the opposite right Hat, you know what like hats off to her um like I know what you're talking about but also at the same time like I thought you did. I thought you looked great in the Evelyn Martins fight. I thought you won the fight. Um, personally, um, I could understand them maybe giving her round two, but rounds one and three for me, um, I thought you were the clear winner for both of those. Um, I don't, I, 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 but I know that even if you did get the fight, even if it did go your way, it'd still be, you'd still be looking back at that one. Like 
I didn't get the finish. I didn't do what I needed to do. And I could understand the criticism there, but I just thought the judges got it wrong. I thought you, I thought you um, were able to inflict way more damage. And I thought that you were aggress- You were the aggressor for a majority of the bout, but it is what it is. No sense in dwelling on it. You went and you would fight. You would go on to fight Jackie McClain. You uh, finished that fight in the very first round. And then Cornelia Holm, uh, for the title fight, you're able to end that one in round three. When we talk about the McLean fight and the home fight, those are like two, those ladies are some of the best fighters in the world. And they're not household names. You really have to be a nerd like me to like know who they are and like understand like how dangerous they are. You obviously knew that because you took these fights. You're like, no, like these are the fights that I need to take. Like the pathway to the UFC, the pathway to a major organization are through the McLeans. They're through the Holmes. Like those are the girls that I need to fight. You were able to do that. And when you reflect back on that, and when you reflect back on your 2022, I mean, that there, there's a lot to be happy about, but like, what's next for you? Like what makes sense? Um, is there going to be like um, another uh, title defense in your future? Or are you just kind of like leaving your options open? Cause I would imagine that there's always going to be options for somebody like you. Uh, right now, we're, I'm kind of leaving it open-ended. I have a few things that I have to make some decisions on at the moment. So I'm kind mm-hmm. of trying to make those decisions right now, not to talk too much about it. But yeah, um, there's definitely opportunities on the horizon for sure. It's got to be like one of those things where, um, at least like pretending I'm you for a second, it's like anytime there's a 135 pound fight going on in the UFC, I'm thinking to myself like, okay, like mentally I got to get ready because you just never know. Somebody could get COVID. There could be a, a, a cancellation. Um, one never knows. One of my friends just got called up into the UFC because of something similar. There was an injury. They're about uh, three weeks out. The UFC gave him a call. They're like, hey, um, can you fight Sadiq Youssef? And he's like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. So he's getting his opportunity. I'm talking about Don Shane is for people. If Don, Don, if you're watching this, good luck on your fight. But in any event, I would imagine for you, it's gotta be, it's gotta be very similar. Girls miss weight all the time. People injuries happen. Coronavirus is still kind of a thing. So anytime that you see a 35 pound fight, like that's got to be like on the forefront of your mind. Like you got, I would imagine like to a degree, there has to be some sort of like mental preparation for you anytime you see one because they're rare. Yeah, it is now. Yeah, it is now because of the position I'm in. Um, I think after one more win, it's, it's a for sure, like depending on how it goes. But I think, I think I, I have a feeling I am in kind of a, position where it's going to be a last minute phone call um so i am trying to get a visa ready to go so in case that happens melissa can you talk to me a little bit like we we talked about your career we talked about some of these like insanely difficult girls that you have had to fight and we know that there are some things some things that you can't talk about but like we know that there are a lot of opportunities for somebody at your caliber and we know that the UFC isn't that isn't that far away from you. Can you talk a little bit about what would a major promotion like the UFC, what would they be getting if they were to like sign somebody like you and like bring you into the fold? Um, I have my answer, but I'd love to hear your answer on um, what type of fighter they would be getting in somebody like you. Um. Well, I think they would get that new wave of fighter that they're looking for. I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but uh, I think a lot of people enjoy watching me fight because I have a little bit, I have some something different to bring to the table. I am a finisher, right? Like I haven't been really stopped yet. Um, so yeah, I think that I, people want to see I mean I'm not a decision fighter and I don't ever plan on being a decision fighter and I plan on you know continuing to develop uh who I am and becoming more and more entertaining because I totally understand that that's how 
that's another thing to consider. It's an entertainment business, right? You want people to want to watch you because they're the ones that are eventually going to be paying your bills, right? Um, and I would love to not have to work two jobs anymore and just train full time. That would be a, a dream come true, right? So if uh, we can have that relationship, myself and, you know, UFC or a bigger promotion, then I would be able to dedicate more time to becoming a more exciting fighter to watch too. So well, we look forward to seeing that. And, you know, it's always a good thing. I feel when we can get more people from abroad in your case, Canada, if you even consider that abroad, eh, maybe not, but I want more Canadians in MMA. I think it's super important at the highest level, particularly the UFC. Um, it's good not to be so ethnocentric and it's good to just get, a wide array of people involved in this sport. Um, the fact that there are only, what, what did I say at the beginning? Three. There are three female fighters that are Canadians that are in the UFC. I think we could do better than that. And I, you won't be denied. I know it's only going to be a short amount of time before I see you in there fighting somebody like Raquel Pennington or Macy Chasson. It's not going to be very far away. And I know that you, are got to, you have got to be really excited about thinking about something like that, like when the training gets tough and you're running those miles that you don't want to run and you're having to go through certain cuts or rehab from injuries, the, the idea in the back of your mind of like fighting a girl like that, that's got to like help pull you through some of those uh, dull moments, I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's a insane goal, but uh, I think I was born to do this. So, and I'm here to take, the challenge and keep working and yeah uh i think i'm ready Actually, I, th I know I'm i think you're ready too i know that you're ready and i know that we are going to be getting somebody at the 135 pound weight class that needs an infusion of excitement and youth um and, and you bring both of those things um and i'm really looking forward to see to seeing that before I let you go, I wanted to give you the opportunity because I know that it takes a team. I know that you have a team that work behind you. They stay in the shadows. A lot of people don't talk about them. We're talking about your coaches. We're talking about your supporters and any the people that sponsor you. I'd like you to have that opportunity to close it out by talking about the team that supports you in your daily life. Sure. Uh, yeah, so course number one my coach dan miller he's been coaching me since day one since i was a skinny little weirdo art kid um believed in me knew i could do great things and like hasn't let up on his belief in me even for a second even when things have been difficult for us in our gym and everything so um i owe basically everything to him because he's put so much work into how i am like i would be I would be I wouldn't be the fighter I am without him because he's really the the mastermind behind it all. He has all the secrets. So um number one thanks would be to him. And then Ken McKenzie, uh he's my gym dad. He uh is obviously been super supportive, he's really stepped up his game. Uh, I call him crying from time to time and he gets it he's happy when I call him crying because that means he gets to help me. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then my friend Jen Clapsey and she's cornered me and been a training partner to me for a number of years now. And I've seen her go through her own struggles and she's been an inspiration to me in that regard Two knee surgeries and she'll be making her amateur MMA debut pretty soon. So you'll get to see, um, another exciting fighter come out of the works here pretty soon. Um, and then my sponsor athletes arena a robin hen from 101 he works with cj hullet at 101 academy um he's been super supportive helped me out a little bit here and there and uh, i think we'll be working together in the future as well yeah so. well i look forward to having you back on the show when you're ready to make either a title defense or your ufc debut it's going to be super cool melissa i really appreciate your time and i look forward to seeing you soon yeah, thank you.